why do you think that high income earning executive or the entrepreneur listening to our podcast right now that's making 300000 to $2 million a year, why is it they should be protecting their income against sickness or injury that would prevent them from being able to earn? So interesting, um, really interesting correlation that not too many people think of when they think of, you know, I'm an executive or I'm a business owner. You know, if you're making $500,000 a year, so many see that as, well, I'm only making 500,000. Uh, a lot of these professionals or athletes or entertainers that make way more than me, they're the ones that really need the insurance. Mm. But they're not really thinking about the second dimension of income. And that's where I talk about the sustainability, the length of their career that they're planning to earn that money. At the end of the day, our executives, our business owners, our doctors, they are compensated pretty evenly with a lot of these athletes. It's just that for an athlete, they're earning that same 10 or $20 million in career earnings in a much shorter window, right? Mm. So instead of 30 years of, of working and running the business, they're earning that same amount of money in seven or eight years. And so we see it a lot more in the athletes buying these policies because they're really concerned about that short window of time that they need to be healthy but here all along, these executives and business owners are earning that same amount of money just over the course of 30 years. So they've got a buck. They've got the same size bucket as those athletes. Just as the bucket is a lot closer in view yeah. for those athletes. So I've got uh, doctors are one that's kind of the opposite order or they have a lot of expenses up front. Yeah. And so they come out of school and start to earn earn money and have a sense that they want to protect their income. I mean, you think about a cardiologist comes out of fellowship, maybe they're making 450, depending on what area of practice they're in. And life's great, but every other doctor that's around them is saying, hey, you need disability insurance because they've got that culture. Where do you think the disconnect is that a business executive or an entrepreneur who are making much the same or even more they're not in that culture with each other. They don't have that black and white approach of we've got to protect our income. Yep, absolutely. It's it's two completely different cultures like you're talking about. Um, one, I think what's, what's really important or relevant for doctors is that they see a lot of these disabilities every day, right? And mm. most are, are really, most really overestimate what a disability really is. Everyone's looking for a wheelchair or a set of crutches, right? You look at any disability insurance marketing right. piece and everyone's laid up in a wheelchair. And I'm just like, you know, my father, I don't know if we'll get into this, but my father battled cancer for 20 years. Mm. He was in a wheelchair for about the last 30 days of his life. And mm. every other day for that 19 and 19 years and 11 months, there was no wheelchair. There was no crutches. He just looked like an ordinary person. Um, so, but when you're a doctor, you're the one operating on a handful of these people. You know, if you're a cardiologist, you're the one installing the stents and you see how arteries and the human body tends to um, start coming apart on uh, or is exposed to certain risks. But two, you know, especially like entrepreneurs and executives that hasn't been as much of a staple occupation until the last, let's say 20 years. And that's, um, I don't know if you know, but in, in the nineties, disability insurance had a really rough ride, a ton of losses. A lot of those risks yeah. were doctors. Um, but it was always the thing. If you were an insurance agent, you wanted to go talk to doctors, right? They needed, they needed disability insurance the most. And so it's always just been this kind of phenomenon that doctors are always talked to about disability insurance. Then, you know, s some of these professionals see enough people go on claim, especially when you have two or three hundred thousand dollars in student loans that you're going to have to be uh, repaying over the course mm -hmm. of your career. There's a lot of money on the line, not just your future earnings for your personal balance sheet, but also paying back a lot of loans that will not default no matter how many times you claim bankruptcy. Which I, I got to say, the thing that's a little bit of an aha here for me that seems to be a bit of a commonality is you have two things that I just hadn't considered before. Number one, 
both your professional athletes, which we'll just call lump that in with celebrity generally, uh, and physicians both have this situation where they're making next to no income or running backward in the sake of a physician borrowing. Right. And then suddenly, boom, boom, they yeah. just have this enormous increase in income from where they were before. Maybe very much the same uh, B-level actor, commercials, small films, and then something happens and they catch on. Yeah. And they have this huge increase in income. And that big pop in income gives them the visibility like this is precious uh my body is dependent on it i need to be able to show up to do this and then couple that with especially on the physician side you are ever present to the fact that these disabilities do happen and probably in that professional space you're not as as a professional athlete you're not hanging out with the guys that got disabled from the prior right. season but it's super prevalent because everybody talks about it. But if you're an executive or entrepreneur, like I'm sorry to say, and it's just a little brutal in the way life works, but gosh, the guy who got disabled, who was a executive for some major corporation or the entrepreneur that had to sell his business at a fire sale because the market didn't cooperate in him trying to sell it coupled with the fact, forget disability, forget wheelchair, them just feeling like, like your father, like he just, like the symptoms might have just been feeling like you have the flu, but for right. 20 years, that'll take yep. somebody out. They're not present to it. The executives and entrepreneurs don't have disabled people in their life. People aren't on the ESPN every night talking about who's on the disabled roster right. or what do, what do they call it? I'm not a huge sports guy. Uh, injury, injured list. Ro injured yeah. list. Thank you. Injured not disabled list. roster, but it, but to them, it's the same that, that it brings right. present to them that they could be in danger of that that doesn't exist for the executives and entrepreneurs coupled with the fact that their income climbed over a long period of time. That yeah. executive or entrepreneur may be over their lifetime well out earning the athlete, maybe out, er out earning that specialist physician by a lot. But because it took them 10 or 15 years to get there, like a slowly boiled frog, it doesn't feel as special nor as vulnerable, even though by pure definition it is. When you're in the top 1% income wise, 99% of people would love to have the role you have in society, either as an executive with that newly minted MBA ready to work for a fraction of what you work for and try to eat your lunch, or you're a business owner running a large successful business and there's somebody out there competing with you to try to get that away. And on top of it, your physicality could fail on you due to sickness or injury. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, ring that bell, and by the way, make sure to share this video. I don't know if you know this, but my cyborg body runs 100% on YouTube views and likes. Please, don't let my batteries die.